fuck now. Holy shit. <laughs> you just like smoked the tires all over. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god, I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that around the corner, please. Okay, no, I won't. No, no, no. All right, guys. So we are going to talk a little bit about the Mopar channels that are currently out there. Uh, at the height, it seemed like anybody with a Hellcat was able to be very successful on uh, YouTube. And it seems like we're, we're witnessing or we're, we're watching a little bit of a shift that's happening. And um, I want to kind of touch on, on that along with the Hellephant. And it's way, you know, it's potential of making its way into the production line. I am joined with by a, uh, a special guest. He has a channel called Family Cruising, and he is going to be weighing in on uh, what what um, what his thoughts are on both of these topics. And uh, yeah, we'll kick it off. Paul, how you doing, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, YouTube? There you go. There's the classic. What's up, YouTube? Uh, so Paul, you know, just to kind of dive right into it, um, it seemed as though you kind of entered the YouTube realm, uh, at the height of, of that Hellcat peak. Um, what do you, what are your thoughts are on, on the whole Mopar landscape and, and some, a lot of these channels are now no longer creating that content for, for Mopar. Yeah. So when I started, there was Kevin Van Boris. And then SRT Mush, right? Um, I started my channel because I saw that I could do interesting things, right? Um, different than what those two guys are, great YouTubers. Um, but I thought I could do something different. I started my channel the same month that you started your channel and the same month that uh, Tall Guy Car Review started his channel. Um, and we kind of got in, I think, at the beginning stages of everybody starting up a YouTube channel, right? And so that was, was about what two years ago, right? March, when, March of 2016 is when this hell started. Um, so you know, everybody started their YouTube channel around that time. You, uh, Corey, Tall Guy Car Reviews, myself. And before that, you had Mush, which started about six months before us. I don't know when Kevin Van Voris started his channel. Um, but that was about it, right? Ever since, everybody that has been able to get a Hellcat has been able to start a YouTube channel. And they're all different, right? Um, but there are a lot of the same stuff. The Hellcat isn't as popular as it once was because Dodge has made 20,000 of them. And I think there's probably 2,000 YouTube channels with Hellcats in them now. So let me let me ask you a question about the Hellcat. Because, um, as you said, it seems as though the Hellcat has kind of uh, fizzled out, if you will. Um, do you think that it's the content that is being created for the Hellcat? Or do you think it's just exhaustion from just, you know, just a lot of Hellcat content that is... Um, that has been pushed out there for multiple years at this point. Well, with the, the problem is, and is the people that have Hellcats, the, some of the smaller channels, and I'm not going to name which ones aren't creative, right? So Corey, tall guy car reviews, we talked about it. It's not the car that makes drives viewership, right? You might get somebody, it might increase your search ratings on Google and on YouTube, but it's not what gets people to come back. It's not what gets, you know, 500,000 views a month. It, you know, if, if it was the views or if it was the car that did it, your channel wouldn't be getting the views it does. It's the personality, right? It's the creativeness of the channel. And quite honestly, I don't think there's a lot of them that are creative. Um, they either don't put in the effort or it just, it, it yeah, just it's not just not very unique content. And you know, I think that's partially why obviously, uh, your channel rose, uh, above a lot of others. It was because of that Hellcat Uber. Um, I thought it was a very unique and, and interesting idea. I think a lot of people were very fascinated by that. Um, 
so I, I kind of want to compare it to this surge that I'm witnessing or that we're all seeing right now in the Mustang realm. Uh, you have uh, It's Just the Six, Woman Driven, Stang Mode, um, that guy Moran, uh, I'm trying to think of a few others, that dude in blue. These are big, these are big time uh, Mustang channels and they continuously with each upload they get massive amounts of views. And then you look at, it almost seems like another Mopar channel with even just similar subscribers. They release a video and, and can't even get a fourth of the views that these, these Mustang channels do. So I'll give you an example. Uh, Stang Mode will release a video. He has 45,000 subscribers and he'll walk away with 14,000 views. A Mopar channel releases the same subscribers releases a video and we'll get five six thousand views do you think it's uh that there's just more people out there looking for that content at this point as opposed to the mopar realm well one there's more mustangs right two they're easily accessible to hellcats um but the thing is is those are all creative channels and um People are looking for Mustang content, right? It's the most popular muscle car out there. Whereas the Challenger and the Hellcat is the second most popular car. The Camaro is the third. Um, but I think it's just going through trends, right? It, there's trends everywhere. There's trends in, you know, every aspect of life. And so do right you think now, like the, the surge uh, maybe of the red eye will kind of get that buzz no. going again? No. No. Because the red eye is too similar to, um, uh, to the Hellcat and to the Demon, right? So when the Demon came out, you had quite a few people buy Demon can uh, demons that haven't been able to make a big success on YouTube. Um, the only real person that has been able to do it is Demonology, right? And Demonology is an awesome guy to watch, whether he has a Demon or not. That isn't the uh, driving force of his channel. That's the reason why people showed up the first video or the second video. But he has done something that no other channel has done, and that's what's driving his current views. So in my opinion, the car gets you that first initial hit, right? So when I started my channel, I knew Hellcat Uber was going to be pretty successful because it was something nobody else has done. I thought it was a good search term and everything. But I knew that in order for people to keep watching, I had to build my channel on something other than just Hellcat Ubers. They're going to get old, right? Um, so I needed to change it up a little bit, and I did, and I ended up stop, stopping doing Hellcat Ubers. And I'll tell you this now that we're on your channel, right? Um, they were fake. They were fake from the very beginning. We had, you know, I would post on local places looking for people to ride in the cars as long as they're over 18 years old. And would sign a liability waiver, right? And so that's how that started. Eventually, it became a lot of work to get people to arrange the rides, to do them. And the views started going down because they're getting old once, twice a week. People are like, yeah, I want to see it. You know, but it took four to five hours to film one of those. Is that why you kind of started getting more into the modding with the Tim Barth and, and, and everything? Yeah. To mix mix it up a, a little and, and talk right. about it. Right. And it, it just so happened that that was about the time that I wanted to do some more cool stuff with the Hellcat. And then, you know, I was talking to SRT Mush. And then we both got invited out to Pennsylvania. And then we did that whole um, uh, pop em Smurf deal, right? Uh, that was fun. And it became a little bit of a rivalry that drove traffic to both of our channels. Um, that's what you got to have that interesting quirk, right? You can't just go out and do, you know, burnout videos or whatever, because there's 15,000 of them. They have to be interesting. They have to be, you know, a bit quirky. Um, one of the things that I like to do on my channel, um, is to do testing, right? Which car does this better than the next car, right? And I did a lot of that. Um, there wasn't a lot of that on YouTube. And that drove a lot of traffic, right? So if you were looking at an F-150 or a Ram Rebel, you would kind of want to see what 
the differences were between the two. And like I said, those videos got 200,000 views. Um, I thought that's where my channel was going to go, was more of that, you know, what's the differences between two vehicles? Okay. So, and, and so did you, did you think that maybe you wanted to lean away from developing Hellcat content? Or just diversify if, you know, uh, the oh, content. I was going to diversify, right? So, like, um, I was planning on getting a red eye, uh, you know. Um, for my subscribers that are watching here, the Viper has been sold this week to a wonderful guy up in uh, Pennsylvania or uh, uh, Minnesota, but right by Tall Guy Car Reviews. And I was going to buy a red eye for the spring. And the red eye was going to be more of, which is better, Demon versus Red Eye? And why? What's the dyno numbers between the two? These are all the videos that I had planned. And it wasn't about which one is faster, which one is, you know, which one can you mod better or any of that stuff because I, I can't out mod SRT Mush. I can't out drag race demonology. So why even argue in that realm? You got to go into a different way. And that so if you're looking at building your small YouTube channel, look at what other people are not doing and fill a void, um, and make it interesting. Add some value uh, to your uh, subscribers because they're basically your customers, and if you're not adding value, they're not going to watch. Um, and you got to make it you know interesting with the titles, and you got to do different things like that. But like you know, if you're not doing something that is adding value they're not going to watch and there are so many channels out there that have uh, that are entertaining that just do nothing but entertain you know um it's going to be very difficult to compete in that market too yeah so you're saying really there needs to be more of a surge of good personalities yep. that get into mopar and can develop the content that go you know because there, there are channels out there. It's just it seems as though they're so, there's so there's a lot of stagnant uh, channels. They're not hitting certain plateaus as fast as some of the other uh, channels out there, you know? Yeah, and I'm going to find that because they're not making content that's um, original that hasn't been done before or doesn't – isn't – I mean, the, every type of content with auto-YouTubing has been done, right? And yeah. – you're not going to, you just have to figure out your own niche and where you can add value and where you can, where people like you, right? Um, if they don't like you, they will never watch. Uh, you know. No, you're, um, right, you're right. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, so I, I think that that's pretty, pretty good in, the, in that regard with the, the whole Mopar channel. And, um, you know, obviously, you know about the Elephant engine, and there has been rumors that have been uh, brought up by Driveway Demons. I'm, I'm not a uh, 100% sure, you know, who the source is and everything. Um, I, I caught a little bit of the video. It's very interesting what, what he was talking about, and uh, I just want to know what your thoughts are about Dodge potentially trying to get that Hel Elephant engine into a production vehicle, and do you think it would actually happen? No. Um, not as the way it's currently set. It will not go into a car at a thousand horsepower, all aluminum block, three liter blower. That will not happen. I. It, there's no way. Um, it'll never pass emissions. It will. You know, in order for them to sell the crate motor in California, they have you have to promise to not to put it into a vehicle. It's newer than 1975 or something. I believe um, he, he was saying that they're they're going to scale back. Now. You know, it's not going to be the um, the exact crate engine that's being uh, sold at this point. They're going to try and modify it so that it actually can get into production. But you you think that really the it's just not capable at that size that and, and everything like that. You you don't think that it's it has that potential to get into production. No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, I've been wrong before, but I've been right more than I've been wrong. So uh, it, was, it was kind of interesting too, because I mean, he was basically saying that it would eventually, it would just replace the Hellcat 
and that uh, his speculation, and this was not based off of his source or anything, that it would potentially be all-wheel drive. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, there will not be a V8 all-wheel drive Charger or Challenger. It will not happen. Um, I, I am, I, I am willing to bet on that. But you do believe that there will be a wide body charger? Yeah, I firmly believe that there will be a wide body charger. And you do believe that there will be a red eye of some sort? Yes. Or something? So you think there's there going to be a wide body red eye charger at some point? Yes. Okay. Probably released at New York or Detroit. Detroit is in less than a month. Okay. And one more thing before we actually just get going. Um, again, there's more rumors about the Barracuda. And this would be supposedly, again, this was brought up again by Driveway Demons. He's bringing up a lot of very interesting topics at this point. That it would not replace the Charger nor the Challenger. Uh, it would essentially be a lighter version of the Challenger. So. What what is your thoughts on the Barracuda and it you know potentially coming into production? There's been rumors that the Barracuda has been coming out for 11 years. It hasn't come out yet, and it will not come out. Here's the reason why: a lighter, smaller version of the Challenger doesn't sell. It's called the Camaro, and the Camaro doesn't sell. So why would Dodge try to steal some of the market of the Camaro, which isn't selling, right? Um, the reason why the Challenger does so well is it can actually be used as a normal everyday car, right? Uh, the Camaro cannot be, and it sells like horse dookie. Um, Dodge isn't going to try to go after that market. They would have to get rid of the Brampton plant can only handle three ma three models, right? The Charger, 300, and uh, Challenger. When the Challenger came on board, they had to get rid of the Magnum, which was a great car. So why would they get rid of, what would they get rid of, the 300 for a Cuda? It doesn't seem like a smart idea. Um, it's not going to happen. There will never be anything called the Cuda. Okay. I mean, I, I, for as long as I've, I've been, you know, around and, and in these news, I, I've heard the speculation, but I've never actually heard any anything with real concrete substance to it. So... You know, the idea of it, in my opinion, is great. I just don't know what the, you know, if it's realistic for them to execute, you know, and for it to be a profitable venture. Right. Because they'd have to get rid of a car. And what car are they going to get rid of to replace with the, with the Cuda? It's not going to happen. Um, same thing goes with this angel trim level that I've been hearing, right? So uh, the... Uh, angel trim level isn't going to happen either. It's going to be either called red eye, it's going to be called something, but it will never be called the angel. So why do you think Dodge took out that trademark? Just to avoid competition? Yeah. Or? Correct. To avoid somebody else from stealing it. It's cheap and easy to do a trademark. Right? And so why would they want to try to deal with the uh, Ford Angel? or the Camaro or the Chevy Angel, right? When they could just trademark it and keep that from happening. It makes um, sense. And, you know, um, why would Dodge? Dodge has been going towards the evil, right? The Hellcat, the Demon, the Red Eye. Why would they go the exact opposite and go with an Angel? It seems stupid, and I don't think it's going to happen. And I know I'm going to get a text message from Corey when this video – or. Yeah, from Corey when this video goes live, he's not going to like it. But friends can disagree, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Paul, so do you have any last words for the some of the cruisers out there that have been, you know, kind of uh, waiting for an, an upload or just any kind of info from the man himself? Any any last message? Well, just to let you know, we're doing okay. Um, I don't know when I'm going to return to YouTube, if I'm going to return to YouTube. Uh, but, um, this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. All right, Paul, thank you so much for, uh, you know, spending some time hanging out and, uh, you know, just giving your, your opinion on, on some of the latest Mopar stuff that's out there. So, all right, Paul, have a great night, buddy. Thanks guys. See you later.